must go on. We have to go on. No, John Hurt, turn back. He's not listening. <laughs> Hello humans, welcome to LV426. Now, we've shot models before, you've seen that, but what we've never done is go in depth into how we tailor these models and build these sets specifically for filmmaking. And with our new sexy 3D resin printing setup, this is going to be the first of many videos where we go in depth into miniature scene creation. From 3D printing and painting, bespoke lighting rigs and motion controllable servo mechanics. In this series, we're going to show you all the tips and tricks that we use to recreate this iconic imagery from Ridley Scott's Alien. To demonstrate how a combination of new and old techniques allows us to create miniatures of such stunning quality that we can now create hugely detailed worlds at a fraction of the scale and therefore cost. But enough about the future, let's get stuck into now. In this instalment we're going to join JP in the model shop. Hi guys, JP here and welcome to my creative lab. Okay, my, my garden shed my eight by six foot garden shed. But it's got everything that I need. And in some upcoming videos, I want to help prove that, that you don't necessarily need a huge workshop to make some creative things. So let's kick things off with our first episode, which is about 3D printing, primarily MSLA printing. And I have to be honest, I'm completely new to 3D printing. I'm very late to the party. And this is because 10 to 15 years ago, I got very excited about the prospect of investing in a resin printer, mainly resin because I could see the high quality results that people were achieving, but those machines were just ah, too expensive for me. And there didn't seem to be a very large knowledge base online in terms of troubleshooting machines and advice into materials and getting these printers to work reliably. But now the landscape has completely changed. Uh, the machines are incredibly cheap and the knowledge base and forums and support is everywhere. You can look on YouTube, you can look on Reddit. There's just so much information now, it's so much easier. And like I say, I'm very late to the party, but at least I can give my perspective as a first time user into how 3D printing can really help accelerate your workflow for uh, model making, prop making, and generally for using full creative things. Now, full transparency, I reached out to Elegoo, who are a fantastic maker of 3D printers, and explained the situation to them, that I was very keen to explore the possibilities of resin printing for prop and model making, and hopefully through the course of a few videos that we can uh, explore together the possibilities and the results that we can get. Now, Elegoo was super cool and extremely kind in gifting us a Saturn II 8K resin printer and a Mercury X wash and cure station. Now, what this kit allows us to now do is very efficiently turn around 3D printed parts, wash them, cure them, have them ready for the paint process. Now, these machines have been pretty much on solidly for the last few weeks since receiving them. And I have to say, I'm very, very impressed with the results. But more on that later. Ash, can you hear me? Ash! Yes, yeah, so I can hear you. Special order. Ask me nicely. What is it? Encourage all those watching to keep in camera alive by supporting them on Patreon. Priority one. All other priorities are rescinded. What about our lives, you son of a bitch? Life should not be compromised. We would only ask it of those who can afford it. It will always be free to those that can't. I've heard enough of this. And I'm asking you to pull the plug. Ripley. What? 
like and subscribe. Now our first 3D print project is making a 3D model of the derelict ship from Alien. Now this is Ridley Scott's 1979 original with design from HR Giga. And I think to this day, the spaceship design is incredible because it still stands up to be an incredibly original design. And it's got very organic biomechanical design that HR Giga was known for. And it's just a very interesting form and shape. Throughout the Alien franchise, we have seen other depictions of this craft, eventually being named the Juggernaut, and in later films shown with some slight changes from the original design. And this is the variant that we will be 3D printing. The 3D model is from a website called Gambody, a website marketplace that has a great selection of high quality video game, comic book and film STL models that are optimised to print on all types of 3D printers. This particular model is from artist Leo Martel. So we have downloaded our STL files. These are pre-sectioned pieces of the full model, which means that we can make our final model a lot larger than if we tried to print as one on the comparatively small build plate of the resin printer. It enables us to effectively have the component parts of a kit that we can then assemble and paint ourselves. This is a technique that is quite common and offers us the opportunity to make final models that are a specific scale for display, or in our case, for filming with. Before printing anything in resin, it is very wise to make sure that you have the correct PPE to properly protect yourself. This includes a mask respirator, gloves and eye protection. A good quality respirator with replaceable filters should last you a long time and decent eye protection with protective areas around the sides are to be preferred. It's worth spending a few extra pennies on trusted and rated brands for PPE as this investment is directly protecting you and your health. A well ventilated space is also a must to ensure that fumes from the resin can dissipate quickly from your working area. So after downloading our STL files we open ChichuBox. This is one of many software package options out there that will help us set up and slice our files ready for 3D printing. Here we can load our model pieces individually and scale them to our preferred size. In our case, we increased the scale up to two and a half times that the model was intended to be printed at, which is the maximum size we can fit on the build plate of our resin printer. If we wanted to print larger than this, it would make sense to print our model pieces with a filament based machine as this would save us money on printing material and also provide a stronger base for our parts. The downside of printing this way, however, is that it would require a bit more cleanup work needed to our printed parts. In ChichuBox, we now hollow out the model parts a bit more than it was initially set up for. This allows us to save on the amount of resin used, as well as allow us to get the wall thickness of the part to be thick enough to hold its form yet not too thick so as to add extra weight to the model. We then go through the process of adding supports to our part. Those supports help hold our 3D print and act as mini bridges to sections of the model that have areas that need a way for the resin to connect together when printed in this layered or sliced method. When we have set up and sliced our STL model, we are ready to print. To do this, we export the file from ChichuBox onto a USB memory stick and then load that into our 3D printer. Once we have loaded our printer with the exported file from ChichuBox, we can print. The reason why I was keen to print as large as I could on this resin machine was to see how viable it would be in this way for medium to large models, for component parts that can be individually printed and then assembled together into something larger. Each part took about 10 hours to print and I'm very pleased to say that I only had a couple of print failures and that was my fault in not correctly setting the base exposure time of the 3D printer. Having eliminated all issues, it was very much a rinse and repeat process of printing out all of the component hollow parts. <laughs> 
Once each part had finished printing, it was time to remove the supports and inspect the part. Sometimes it is best to remove the supports after the washing process, but in this case, it made more sense to remove the supports first. I added a lot more support material than is usually needed. This was due to the part being hollow and needing a lot more structural support than normally needed, so it did not deform whilst going through the printing process. Removing the supports is definitely where your gloves and eye protection are needed. Even though the supports are fairly supple having just come from the printer, they can still be quite sharp if broken in the bunch. The raft base that the model was printed on is definitely worth being careful with, as snipping this and breaking it free can sometimes reveal very sharp edges, and a snipper tool can sometimes send very sharp pieces of resin into the air and towards your face. I'm wearing a double layer of gloves here, and sometimes it is better to wear even thicker gloves when removing support material of this amount. As you can see, after we have removed the supports, we already have a very clean result, with minimal marks left for us to clean up and post-process. This is a huge advantage of resin printing, as it almost always creates a print finish without visible layer lines or other major artifacts. The surface is smooth and very detailed, virtually all ready for painting. We take our printed part and now wash it to remove the residual uncured resin from its surface and inside of its hollow center. I do this by putting the part in the Elegoo washing station. This is a container filled with isopropyl alcohol that helps dissolve the uncured resin from the part. The container has a stirring blade at the bottom that agitates the chemical in the container, which in turn thoroughly washes and releases the uncured resin. Having a station like this makes the process very efficient and clean, as you can set the timer of the wash station to clean your parts for however long you need. For smaller or clear resin parts, it sometimes makes sense to use fresh or smaller amounts of isopropyl alcohol in a Ziploc bag and agitate that to clean the parts. This can also be a good solution for cleaning very fragile parts as you can control how crazy to go with shaking of the bag. <laughs> It's time to cure our prints, and this is an important part of the process. It ensures that our parts effectively reach maximum strength and dryness, as our print resin is cured by exposure to ultraviolet light. By placing into the curing station and setting a desired exposure time on the dial, it allows our part to receive the required wavelength of UV light to cure the resin. A rotating turntable within the machine ensures that the part gets even exposure. Even after curing the part in the machine, I like to take the part outside and expose it to the air and some shaded sunlight. This just allows the part to breathe a little and also gather some extra UV exposure so that the part can completely cure. <laughs> So, we have now printed all of our parts. Now it's time to test fit the component pieces and figure out how best to join them together. Before joining the parts, I rigged some simple LED lighting to the cockpit and window sections of the ship. A small hole was made at the rear of the ship to allow a thin cable to provide external power to the LEDs. I also added some thin styrene strips to the areas that I knew were going to benefit from having extra detail added. Because we enlarged the model two and a half times the intended print size, it was a good idea just to add a little bit of extra detail in there to help sell the scale a bit better. I wanted to keep the final model as lightweight but strong as possible, so I decided to glue each part together with super glue and activator spray. But before physically joining the glued parts, I injected some expanding insulation foam into each section. So as the foam slowly expanded into the hollow parts, it would eventually fill the entire interior, acting as an armature to help hold everything together as one. 
To fill the gaps between the glued parts, I use model filler putty, but you can use any type of Bondo or similar epoxy putty to fill any gaps that can be sanded and blended afterwards. The only important thing to consider is that your filler of choice should easily accept paint, otherwise it will be very hard to blend those areas later. With our parts all assembled, glued and filled, it's now time to lay down a base coat of primer paint so that we can unify the model in colour to see any areas that need further work, as well as prepare the surface to accept our final layer of paint. I'm using a regular rattle can paint for this, and it's a high build primer. This means that along with priming for paint, it will also help add a slightly thicker layer of paint to the model that will help smooth the surface out even more and eliminate any tiny gaps that were missed by the filler. Once that is all dried, we are pretty much set for our final paint finish. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching part one of the series. I'd like to thank Elegoo once again for making this all possible by donating so kindly the machines for us to use. And I hope it serves as a general introduction into 3D printing and specifically resin printing and what the possibilities might be for model makers and filmmakers. So stay tuned for parts two and three. Until then, JP signing off. <sighs> so good. Next up, JP is going to show us how to make this modestly sized model look life size using lots of texturing and painting techniques. He'll also show you how he created these weird volcanic looking rock shapes to dress our tabletop set. And then in the third episode, we're going to bring it all together to shoot our miniature set with some classic lighting tricks and atmospherics. And then we'll just take off and nuke the site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure.